So I want you to consider a body that's centered on the principal stresses, or where the principal stresses are the coordinate system that define it. So it's just an arbitrary body that I'm going to slice. I'm going to slice the body on a plane, and that plane is defined by this unit normal. And then the body's you know under, undergoing some load, so there's some traction vector. And that traction vector is neither normal to the plane or any of the axis. You know, it's just arbitrary. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> since our, our basically the, our state of stress at this point is centered on the principal axes, we can use our Cauchy stress equation right, So the stress is sigma 1, sigma 2, by the way, you know, in your reservoir geomechanics course, uh, if you're a petroleum engineer, you know, you had an undergraduate course in reservoir geomechanics, I mean, basically, you only deal with the principal stresses, you just call them something else, right, what are they called? SH min, SH max, S horizontal, right? So th this is the, I mean, because it's a good approximation in the earth, right? But it, it's not necessarily true. It's, it's a good approximation, though. I mean, in reality, the, the stress tensor would have some shear components. So when I say shear, I just mean not normal, right? And, So the traction vector then is sigma 1 in 1, sigma 2 in 2, sigma 3 in 3. All right, so that's the traction vector, okay? Now, if I want to find the component of the traction vector in the direction of the unit normal, how would I do that? Let me say it another way, maybe. I want to get the projection of the traction vector on the unit normal. This is just simple vectors, right? Huh? It is a cosine, right? But there's a special, in vector, we, 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 there's a very special operation. A dot product, right? right? Understand, I mean, it, that's all the dot product is, right? It's the projection of one vector onto the other, right? So if somehow the normal ve vector were on the ground and the, and the uh, traction vector were pointing up in the air and we, and we had a s light right above it, it would be the shadow on the ground, right? That's, that's all it is. All right, so the component, now, now I've carefully removed my vector, so now this is not a vector, but rather a vector component, right? So the component in the normal direction is equal to the traction dotted with normal, right? And that is That guy, right? So then what would the shear be, right? We know the traction vector, and we know the component in the normal. So when I say shear, I'm just saying the component tangent, right? This one. Hmm. 
Okay, I, I meant to say I see what you're saying. What did I? Yeah, no, no, I, I know, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it definitely should be. I don't know why I wrote it like that. I think, okay, it definitely should be. <laughs> I don't know why I wrote it like that. So the shear component would be, you know, something like the, the magnitude, well, let's see. We know the, you know, if we, if we computed the magnitude of the traction vector, right, it would be this, the shear component squared plus the normal component squared, square root, right? That would be the magnitude of the traction vector. So from, from that equation, right, so the magnitude of the traction vector is equal to the shear component squared plus the normal component squared, right? And so then if we square this thing, we get rid of the square root sign. So we have this equation. Okay, and then also we can say that, you know, the magnitude of the unit vector is equal to 1, right, which is equal to n1 squared plus n2 squared plus n3 squared, right. So now we have a system of equations, right, uh, 1 equation, 2 equations, three equations, and if we write them in a matrix form, for n1 squared, n2 squared, and three squared is equal to one T N T S plus T N squared. Okay? So now we can solve this system of equations. Right. And we'll just pretend we not pretend, we, we know we have access to great tools like Mathematica, so I'm not going to do the algebra. And I'll just write down the solution. So if we solve that system of equations, then we'll get n1 squared equals ts squared.
Okay? And if you remember when we defined the principal stresses, we defined them in a way that sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 is greater than sigma 3. So it turns out that from that, you know, we can infer that this denominator is always going to be greater than or equal to 0. And so for this one, And again, the way we arranged it, this denominator is always going to be less than or equal to zero. this denominator is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay? So, basically, then we know that from that, that this whole term has got to be greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to zero, greater than or equal to zero. And so then if we hold the ends constant, wipe out the denominators, and just rearrange these equations, we can get a set of equations that look like this. Okay. Does anybody get any clues about the form of that equation? What? What? Yeah. I mean, that's what we're we're deriving, right? But more specifically, I mean, just look at the equation, right? This this is an equation of a circle. If this is x, you know, this is y, x squared, y squared, greater than r squared. So it's just an equation of a circle, all right? So that's, this is one of them. I'll write down the other two on the next page. So the other two are, This one is that guy.
And so now, if we draw these three circles on a plane, that is, say, this is the normal component, this is the shear component, the three principal stresses lay along this line. And I've, all, I've drawn them such that they're all positive. Uh, this will be a scenario where the depending on your definition of positive, that the entire body is undergoing a hydrostatic expansion or compression. Um, so this would be sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. And then we draw these circles. And from those inequalities, what you'd see or find out is that the state of stress is always in this region. And this guy is, of course, that's the maximum shear stress. And that would be, you know, just from the equation of the geometry, right, then that's just one half sigma 1 plus sigma 3, right? It's just the radius of the circle, of the big circle. Okay? And um, hopefully, you know, last time I tried to do this, you guys couldn't see real well. Uh, let's see if I can... Uh, So, probably can't see that very well, but re remind, you know, keep in mind it'll be on the video if you really want to take a look. So, on the left there, we have basically the box. The boxes are, you know, normally I draw some irregular shaped potato for a body, but in this case, it's just a square body. The green surface is a plane that we're going to, you know, we're cutting that body with. And it's a little bit hard to see, but there's also a, a pair of, you know, normal vector, a normal vector to the plane and in the plane, so you can kind of see the positive direction of the plane. And then there's also, and you'll see it a little better when I rotate it, then the black line is a, is a traction vector. And then over here on the right, I've computed uh, or you know those more circles associated with, so if I define any stress, the black dot that you see the black dot that you see right there where, my, where the mouse pointer is, is the state of stress, okay? And you'll see no matter what I do, it, the state of stress will always lie in that, in that region. So if I move these around, it changes the shape of the circle because it changes the principal stress, the stresses, right? And then this is the plane of rotation. So there you can see really clearly that black line pointing out is the traction vector. Um, and so here, I'm just rotating the plane, my cutting plane, and you'll see that the state of stress always lies, you know, that black dot always lies in, in the circle. Right? So, you know, if you look at a textbook, the, they'll have this picture drawn with all these angles defined, and because at one time, you know, before we had great symbolic computation tools like Mathematica or MATLAB, it might have been easier to actually use the geometry to determine any given state of stress via, you know, given a plane or a normal vector. But nowadays, it's more or less just for insight that we use these because, you know, in the time that it would take you to compute all that geometry, you just do the, the you know, you have a rotation matrix, you multiply it by the state of stress and you get the new state of stress in the rotated coordinates, right? But, I mean, it's sort of ubiquitous, you know, you'd be expected to know. I think maybe even on the PE exam, more, sh more, more circles show up. Uh, anyway. So let's look at one kind of special case.